Okay, everyone, welcome back. And I'm going to be continuing the round two commentary. So, loser's bracket round one, for those of you that aren't aware. And today I will be covering HSA versus Mr. E, two players I haven't gotten the chance to cover previously. And we are actually into week three as of now, but. No games have been uploaded right yet. So, um, previously, HSA has had to face Dice and Mr. E facing Theophan team week one. And it went well for the both of them. So now it's a matter of deciding who will be sent to the losers in the following round. Okay, then. So, HSA being the Pilot 98, being a shout out to the Pirate 99. So I say we start without waiting at all. There we go. So So we see a cloister lead from HSA and Mr. E going for the double edge there just to get some initial damage. Sometimes you might go for curse, but it really depends on the set. So HSA playing it safe, so he goes to his Steelix only to double back to his uh, to his own lax. So his lax is body slam, whereas Mr. E's isn't, but he does correctly scout the fire blast, so that could also mean that his Snorlax um, can be cursed. It might have some edge against Mr. E's Snorlax should it be a Sleep Talk variant. Might not be. And the Gengar comes in but gets, well, is essentially going to be Pursuit Trapped by Mr. E um, as he misses the first Dynamic Punch but then manages to land the second one after not without having taken some damage first, and that actually manages to bail out HSA's Gengar from Mr. E's Tyranitar. So, not only that, but manages to two-hit KO the Needle King on the switch in, so things are looking pretty good for um, HSA, because he got out of this situation scot-free, and he has two potential lax checks, one not so much of a lax check, check because it's Fire Blast, Anyway, Mr. E. Zapdos reveals to be a uh, Empower Water type, and Pilot, I mean, HSA's Steelix was a Body Slam. Steelix gets the boom on uh, Zapdos. So one of the conjectures that I can make is that he might have a Jinx in the back, so it's not unlike the Lavos team once seen in SPL. There could be another, uh, another Pokemon there. Mr. E kind of on the back foot in here, this first game, as his Tyranitar is out of commission, Snorlax got boomed on and took uh, too much damage, so there, isn't, there wasn't really much that Mr. E could do. This was a lightning quick game, um, HSA pretty much taking out all of Mr. E's answers very decisively. So, we're going to be moving on to game two. Same sides. Same as before, close to lead from HSA, whereas Mr. E brings a Reflect Raikou as he goes to his own cloister. HSA making an interesting switch. Um, probably um, not conceding any momentum to, the, to uh, Mr. E's Poister, so they're both going to get spikes on the same turn. Uh, it's an interesting switch to make, basically switching to Poister when you're facing Raikou, but it turns out, I mean, it went well for him, I guess. And he does manage to get some damage. Those spikes are going to be very helpful against this uh, Raikou, which is uh, most likely not Sleep Talk, um, which means that he may not have other... Um, valuable answers against the likes of Zapdos. Just as I say that, HSA's Body Slam Earthquake 
uh, Snarlax is putting in a lot of work and forces this Raikou to use rest. So, um, this can be a free opportunity to set up, but no, HSA just goes for Body Slam here, which is also completely viable as a move. He's going to go to his own cloister. Taking a double edge, um, a crit would have been lethal for the cloister, but no, he has at least one other turn to live. He might scout for a move. Now he goes to his Gengar and dodges one of the one of the, whatchamacallits, one of the double edges, but it does get put to sleep from level kids, so that's rather unfortunate. Um, Mr. E doesn't reveal any Pursuit Trapper as of yet, instead goes to his own Raikou to burn off sleep turns. Um, Mr. E's team is most likely a stall team, whereas HSA is very likely to be an offense, not unlike the last one we just saw. It could in fact be the exact same team, um, we're not sure yet, but uh, we didn't really have many turns to look into the two players' teams last game. But um, Mr. E's team is confirmed to be stall as he does reveal the Skarmory and then goes to his uh, Raikou. I know I'm a bit, I'm a couple of turns behind here. This um, Snorlax is gonna slowly apply some pressure there, just you know keep Mr. E honest and um, HSA goes to Gengar probably to take advantage of that uh, sleep turn maybe hoping for some early wake up to get a T-Bolt or a boom and uh, Mr. E's Raikou finally wakes up as it roars in Steelix so Steelix can prove to be very valuable in this matchup uh, especially considering the Poison Cloister gets an Earthquake on that Poison Cloister. So that's already about 40% uh, if you include the Toxic and Spikes damage on, on the switch. And we finally see Zapdos, which was supposed to be Whirlwind. I say that because the Cloister exploded on the Whirlwind. So Mr. E making a very good call and essentially manages to explode and act before the Zapdos, which used Whirlwind and had negative priority. So it was a great call out there. And in comes Golem, who is going to rapid spin away those spikes. And that's going to be very helpful. And then deal some chip damage to this... Uh, Steelix, and in comes the Starmie. So interestingly enough, we see three, I mean, uh, sorry, one Spiker and two potential Spinners. Hmm. Okay, so that's, that's an interesting couple of turns there. So if we just backtrack for a second, we were in this situation after the explosion that um, Mr. E managed to make a good call and explode on the Zapdos, so his Raikou has like a lot less pressure put on, on him. And he brings in Golem to go for an early spin, which, you know, agreeable. Um, then he takes an Earthquake in the process, and then he takes another Um, like, okay, yeah, I mean, judging by the situation, if you don't have another water type, this can be like, an okay move. But then he reveals Starmie, so I'm not sure what he was thinking, but personally, I might have gone to Starmie earlier. Then he doubles back into Golem, which can be a good call, but um, there is only one problem. So now he's facing Snorlax, and that's fine. We know that the Snorlax is Earthquake, but he, like, HSA has plenty of fodder, so it may not be in Mr. E's best interest to click Explosion. So it's it's a very ri uh, risky 50-50 between clicking Explosion and taking out uh, potentially one of uh, HSA's win cons and actually clicking something else or you know missing that call. And uh, he he clicks Earthquake and HSA is aware of um, of this disadvantageous situation. I say that, but at the same time, this golem could also not have been at all. If, he, if it were rest, 
I think I would have clicked rest on that turn. So, yeah. Um, in any case, um, the Snorlax reveals to be not only Lovely Kiss, but also Fire Blast. And I can only assume that the last one might be rest, considering it's a stall team. And HSA's Snorlax is Sleep Talk. Decent use offense teams. Uh, there's the body slam, no para, but still dealing decent damage. Now, um, double edge is a little bit better. So, in a 1v1 situation like this one, had Mr. E's Snorlax won the speed tie, it would have taken out the, the other Snorlax, and that would have been a really big problem for Asia Standard. But uh, no, that's not what happened. None of these two mons are curse, interestingly enough. So it really does just boil down to uh, the luck involved with Sleep Talk here. Um, Double Edge is going to slowly weaken uh, Snorlax, Mr. E Snorlax, as well as the other Sn Snorlax. So the recoil damage is gonna play a big role here. And just as I say that, Mr. E Snorlax is taken out um, at the cost of nothing because HSA Snorlax is completely healthy now. And now Mr. E is in a really tough spot. He's gonna have to take on this Steelix as he goes for a reflect. And he's gonna risk a lot because um, he's gonna have to play smart and force out all of his Pokemon and somehow manage to ward off this one. And you can only do it for so long. So at this point, I think we can safely speed up the turns here and see what happens. I'm kind of curious to see what kind of Starmie this will be. It's taking the Body Slams rather well, so there's a substitute. And we may just see a Nightmare here. And yes, we see a sub-Nightmare Starmie. It's the first time I ever see it on a stall team but that uh, would kind of make sense, I guess, considering the presence of Poister and a Rapid Spin Golem, like, why bother? So, the Snorlax is in a rather tough spot, um, but so is the Starmie. So, a, a para here would be Spell Death. Uh, Mr. E's going to go for a sub, but HSA seems to be calling out every move and making the right calls here. He's going to go for that one more more body slam but no para uh, still out of range though so now this star meet really really is a bad spot because well unless mr e can play smart and do around all this stuff and it looks like so far it's going well for him but seriously one para is going to be the end of the star meet here so he's gonna have to be very careful um when recovering even earthquake can break the substitute so that's also something to keep uh in mind. It's going to try and make the Snorlax consume all its PP. Mind you that Steelix can kind of curse and Body Slam from Steelix also coming out here. So this may very well have uh, may very well be a repeat of the previous team. Um, yeah. But uh, this is, uh, it's looking like HSA is putting on so much pressure and he's not even using spikes. He could, and if he were to do it, he would actually have spikes for good because the Starmie is a rapid speed. But uh, he's going to phase out the Skarmory. And Raikou can't do anything to it. So if he booms on Starmie, I'm not sure if that's advisable, but it would still be quite a threatening move to make. Especially if he has a Jinx in the back. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to keep keep watching, of course, and uh, yeah, for those of you that uh, haven't been watching or been keeping up to date with the GSC Seasonal, I do recommend to watch some of the other videos there. So Raikou um, pivots in for a second, and it does deal some hefty damage, but the Raikou also had a uh, reflect. And just as I say that, the Steelix finally manages to get a para on the Starmie, so this is looking like a really tough spot. 
Starmie getting the crit, but it's too little too late because now the Snorlax outspeeds the Starmie no matter what. And yeah, um, this is uh, looking like curtains. Mr. E forfeits and will be sent to the loser's bracket of the tournament, whereas HSA moves on to the following week in the winner's side. So I hope you guys have enjoyed and stay tuned for some more. Tschüssi.